Omaha News on KPAO. Welcome to We Omaha News. My name is Deshaun Cunningham. Tonight's story will be about medical marijuana in Nebraska. Kitrin Zeichel will not be joining us tonight as she is currently employed by an opponent of one of our interviewees. The topic of medical and recreational marijuana is hot not just in Nebraska, but all around the country. As we've seen states like Colorado and Washington and others legalize and take steps towards full legalization, we wanted to see what is being done in Nebraska with medical and recreational bills. We talked with Senator Tommy Garrett of Bellevue, Nebraska. Senator Garrett is the author of LB 643, which would enact medical cannabis use in Nebraska. To hear how the bill would be enacted and what would be a part of that, we talked with the senator at his office in Lincoln earlier this week. Check it out. We're doing this episode about LB 643 and how uh, medical marijuana could be introduced in Nebraska. You wrote this bill. What, were, what was your main reason for writing it as far as from a patient standpoint? Well, really the story, I had my first session in the legislature on the Friday afternoon of the last day that we could submit new legislation. I call them the moms, came to my office and pleaded, and, and that's not too strong a word, pleaded with us to pre, please bring a medical cannabis bill. And they, they had a copy of a bill uh, Cannabis Compassion and Care Act that was from Kansas. <clears throat> and so uh, when I heard their story, it was like, we, okay, let's just submit that, that bill as a placeholder. Let me look at it over the weekend and, and decide what to do. So we at least could get it something submitted. Over the weekend, I looked at the bill. I didn't like the bill at all. It, was, it, it went way too far. Uh, but in my research uh, about medicinal cannabis, I really had my eyes opened, and and I started. The the more I read, the the more excited I got, because there were so many diseases and ailments that were showing uh, uh, improvements with medical cannabis, uh, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, Huntington's disease, uh, a myriad of things, and so. And I had a personal experience with my father-in-law, who was dying of cancer back in 1977. Uh, he had pancreatic cancer and was undergoing chemotherapy and was just violently sick with nausea and uh, so sick he couldn't take additional treatments. And the doctor in 1977 recommended to him, say, hey, if you can get some marijuana, it'll really help with the nausea and help your appetite. And uh, my sister-in-law went out and got him marijuana. It was not hard to get. Uh, and it did exactly what the doctor said. So, so my own personal experience combined with what I was learning in my research was that, hey, this is uh, it's the least we can do for the moms. And, and, and quite honestly, I thought, I'm not a politician. I, I thought I'm going to get skewered over this. And uh, when I brought the bill, people from all over Nebraska were writing and calling uh, and saying, thank you for bringing this. Uh, I was, it was quite the opposite of what I thought was going to happen. There were a lot of people from all over Nebraska that said thank you. Oh yeah, and that's kind of something I've noticed too because I've actually been a part of some of these petition drives and things and actually western Nebraska, you would think that area really wouldn't be where there's been a lot of support but there has been a lot of support for these types of things. Now, uh, one of the things that was in LB 643, uh, people are saying it's a limited bill. Uh, when it, you, in the bill, if it passes, it said that there would be one care center per district, am I correct? Per con congressional, congressional district, district, right, one manufacturer. Yeah. Okay, now, would people in western Nebraska be at a disadvantage since that's such a large area to go to have to get medicine versus people in Omaha that are in a smaller district? Well, we, we thought about that. There's one manufacturer per district, but there's going to be four dispensaries per district. So, and those dispensaries could be, uh, obviously, going to be geographically separated within that congressional district. And, and, and we took account of, uh, in our bill, to make sure that uh, municipalities, uh, you know, these places would have to abide by zoning. And, and if, if a municipality didn't want the, the dispensary in, in their, their city or town, they had the right to say so. Could LB 643 in the future be amended to include things like recreational use and or would that be, require a separate action? That, that would be a completely separate, and, and we really, you know, we're a conservative state, and 
there are a lot of people who are afraid of recreation. And that was probably the, the biggest argument is about the recreational. They, they felt that medicinal cannabis would be a quote unquote slippery slope. And, and, and my, my comment to them that this is strictly for medicinal use, the, the bill very tightly controls what uh, medicinal cannabis can be used for. And, and we modeled this after the Minnesota law. And the Minnesota law requires that physicians uh, be willing to abide by all the rules of the program and patients have to apply to the program as well. And so it's very tightly going to control that. And there's no way that, uh, that this legislature is ever going to approve. You know, we don't have, we don't have leaf uh, marijuana in this bill. It's only in pill and oil form. So you can't smoke it. It's pill and oil and, and strictly for medicinal purposes. Uh, they can come back to the legislature if there are other diseases, if research uh, shows that there are other diseases where medicinal cannabis has shown efficacy, uh, then, then they can come back to the legislature and say, hey, we'd like to add whatever disease. What are some of the current um, approved diseases in the bill as it is now? Uh, Crohn's, glaucoma, epilepsy, Dravet syndrome, uh, cancer, uh, uh, what else? Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. It's a very limited number of, of of ailments that uh, this can be, uh, multiple sclerosis. So in the future, LB 643 could be amended for something like other states give it to HIV patients. So yes. that could be an option in Nebraska, yes. just I, not as related to recreation. And actually, we, we do have that for HIV already. But, okay. uh, but what we don't have in there is PTSD, which, yeah. uh, which bothers me as a veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 22 veterans that commit suicide every day. Uh, was there a reason that was left out? Well. Uh, I, I was trying to be a little, little, little smart about this. Uh, there's a certain member of the, the, the body that was filibustering this, and uh, I saw that where he was going to be going after that and, uh, and, and pain, intractable pain. So I tried to lead turn him in fighter pilot, fighter pilot parlance. I tried to lead turn him and, and, and cut that off. And, and uh, I wish I wouldn't have done that now. But, uh, but you know. The longest journey begins with the, with the first step. So if we can get our bill approved for what we've got, then in a year maybe we can come back and look. Once everyone feels comfortable with this and sees that this isn't the big boogeyman that people make it out to be, that hopefully we can add intractable pain and and PTSD, those kinds of okay. ailments. Now I was here last year when you introduced the bill on the floor. Uh, it's carried over from the previous year. Do you see it passing this year? And if not, do you th think it will be brought up each year until it's passed? I feel really good about it. You know, we had about 28 votes. It was being filibustered. We need 33 for cloture. Uh, and, and so we, uh, at, at the same time that we had, this was going on, uh, we had the, the death penalty vote. And, uh, and there was a lot of uh, angst in overriding the governor's veto. A lot of members of the, of the legislature were taking a lot of heat. And they just, they didn't want the, the additional heat of passing medicinal cannabis. So I had to make the decision on select file. We got through committee, got through general file, we were on select file. I, I, I thought the wise thing to do was to bracket it so we could bring it back this session still on select file so we didn't have to start over. And, and so, so that's where we're at. And I thought, you know, it, uh, last year in, in June, I think it was the June issue of National Geographic, it had medicinal cannabis, the science of medical marijuana. It was on the cover of Time magazine. And, and I've always said that the best way for us to get people on board is for them to but take the time and, and research this, educate themselves, and, and not be afraid of it. Because if you go out there and do your homework and find out about this, you'll see that I, I really believe that uh, medical cannabis, it's a naturally growing herb. It, it, it'll help a lot of different diseases and ailments. Now, at some point, do you think that not just Nebraska, but any state will have to issue a federal challenge on the class one restriction of marijuana? You, you know what, the, the whole schedule one thing just infuriates me. It, it's, uh, you know, the reason that there's not medical, quote unquote, medical research in the U.S. is because it, marijuana is a Schedule One drug. The definition of Schedule One means that it has no medicinal value, and and other Schedule One drugs are PCP. Uh, okay. While cocaine is not a Schedule One, you know, it has medicinal value. 
the DEA refuses to take this out of being a Schedule One. But 23 states, the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico, have all said, you know, we're not waiting for you. We're going to go ahead and do that. And President Obama and the Department of Justice, President Obama directed the Department of Justice to leave those states alone uh, with, that have medicinal marijuana. And I just heard last night on an interview with uh, Donald Trump, one of the Republican candidates, that he said he's 100% on board with medical marijuana. He doesn't like recreational, but he's 100% on board with medical marijuana. He said he has friends that that use medical marijuana, and it really helps them. So I'm hoping that uh, the next administration that comes in will, will be able to kind of get the DEA in, in line here and, and say, come on, because uh, it, it would be great and wonderful. We, we have research, medical research, but it's from universities or organizations outside of the United States. But I would love nothing more than to see marijuana rescheduled to schedule two, three, or four and allow medical research uh, because I, I think it'll, it'll be eye opening. With our neighboring state of Colorado having basically full legalization, do you think that that makes it easier for what you're doing with the medical bill? Are, is the sense among senators that this is something, you know, or in the past it might have been a bit taboo? Do you think it's been easier to bring this forward and talk about it with not just the general public but the legislative body as well? I think with Colorado, it's uh, it, it may have helped. The, the fact that Colorado hasn't imploded since they legalized recreational marijuana. Uh, I've got a dear friend who's the, a former governor of Colorado, uh, and I called him when I first brought this bill. And I, it, Bill Ritter's his name. I, I asked, I said, Bill, what's the deal with your medical marijuana program? He said it was the worst thing they ever did. He said because. Uh, it was a con it was a ballot initiative, and because it was a ballot initiative, when it passed, it was it was a, a constitutional amendment. And because it was a constitutional amendment, the legislature and the governor couldn't do anything about it. So it was left up to the doctors, the medical community, to decide what they were going to prescribe medical marijuana for. And so he said, my friend told me he said we had every snowboarder between the ages of 18 and 25 going to the doctor saying it hurts when I do this. And he said doctors had 15-minute office appointments charging these guys $250, so they're making $1,000 an hour, and they just couldn't write the scripts fast enough. And he said it was the worst thing we ever did because we couldn't control it. Our bill, modeled after the Minnesota bill, has a very specific limit uh, on what it can be uh, prescribed, recommended for, and so uh, it won't run amok like that. But, but again, I think on the upside, the fact that Colorado has not, with both medical cannabis and for the longer term and, and recreational, the state has not imploded. And, uh, you know, it's been a kind of an interesting experiment, if you will, for us to sit there and, and watch how things are going, going there with that, that state. We talk with Mark Elworth, Jr. Mark Elworth is a former third-party libertarian candidate for governor in Nebraska, and he has also been active on issues of legalization, medical cannabis, and ending the incarceration around the prohibition of marijuana. In our interview tonight, we'll learn more of what he has to say on Nebraska's upcoming bill for medical cannabis, LB 643. I, start, I did my first petition and drive in 98. I did ones, I've done multiple, I've been on multiple petition drives, um, but I seen when the legalization was going on in Colorado and they're ready to legalize it in the next state over and I'm looking at our state and I'm seeing nothing. I'm seeing no no real organization that's doing anything. I don't see our state going anywhere. Um, this was before I got on the ballot. So that's when I got involved with the Libertarian Party and my run for governor. The next question. Now with LB 643 that's been introduced by Senator Garrett it's been called one of the most restrictive medical uh, cannabis acts. Uh, it says that there can, if it would pass, that there can only be one dispensary per congressional district. Out in western Nebraska, that's a huge district. A lot of your support for your past petitions has come from western Nebraska. Do you think that this bill is a good starting place that can be amended? Or if it doesn't pass, how do you think the issue of medical marijuana should be reintroduced? Well, 
this this is a very limited bill. Um, it was, it's it's designed to help very few people. Um, it's mirrored off the Minnesota bill. It's helping less than five percent of the medical patients are getting help. It's basically become a designer drug. Nobody can get their hands on it. Um, it, it costs to get this drug. It costs to get the medicine. It costs probably five times what it would cost off the street. Um, there's still people from Minnesota still, if they really want the medicine, they're still driving to Colorado get get it all the way through. So if we could get this passed, it would be a very good thing. Um, we, we could get some people help right now, but we could amend it either through the unicameral or through the petitioning process. Um, I'm really involved in the petitioning process, and that's what I'm interested in. Um, if this could go through, then we could not only do it through the unicameral, but we could run a petition to add smoking, um, add the growing, add more, um, more ailments to it, put more in the hands of the people than just to the very select few. When it comes to legalization, which issue do you think is more critical to getting it legalized? Is it the medical needs or is it come down to the money that can be made from taxing recreational use? Which one do you think will be more important for getting it legalized? Well, um, this is uh, Nebraska and we have a, lot, a variety of voters. A lot of say, say we're really conservative and money is going to talk to people. Right now people are, are really uneducated and misinformed about what, what, this, what medical marijuana is. Um, we're not going to change anything in this state. Um, things aren't going to change just because we legalized medical marijuana. Things are going to keep going on. Uh, we might as well do it. We might as well quit, you know, spend all this money to keep it out of our state when it's here anyways. It's been here. I mean, legalization, it's not going to affect how much is here or what's not. Um, it's going to save our taxpayers some money because we're not going to be um, providing jobs to cartels and illegal drug smugglers. We're going to provide jobs to people that want to work and be taxpaying citizens, and those businesses would pay taxes. We could also, of course, we could unfill some jail cells. They, they keep talking about building a jail. That's the last thing we need to do. That's going to cost us more money. We want to get these people out of jail right now. We have patients out there that need it right now. Um, our, our state should have did something for these poor kids. They, they're lining up down in Lincoln. They had um, one day they invited everybody to come down and talk about it. And all these people with medical conditions sat there for four hours before they even had a chance to talk. And then they didn't get a chance to talk. They sat there. Did, if they got a line they could, to get water, they had to wait back in the back of the line. It was a complete joke. And these people, seen them on, on public television throughout the state, how bad they suffered. And our state is more worried about a, a gas tax. And, you know, our unicamerals wants to tax our people when we could be, you know, making that revenue somewhere else. When you talk about increasing revenue and jobs, you've also talked about in the past that you want to introduce a hemp bill in Nebraska. Nebraska is a pretty agricultural state. What kind of impacts do you see that bringing to Nebraska as far as not just agriculture related industries, but manufacturing? You can make hempcrete, there's textile industries. What, so what sorts of things do you think the state could do to encourage businesses around? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm starting to think that hemp, being a farming state, hemp is our entry point. Uh, I started as an environmentalist. It's good for our economy. We could build a green economy is what I'm trying to say to people. We could uh, quit, quit dumping chemicals all over our farm fields and put a natural product on there. This crop is going to save our fields. We have um, an environmental report that came out two years ago that said our state's drying up. Our water our water's drying up. We need this. We need this now because it, it it saves our water table. It cleans our water table. It cleans our our soils of all these toxins that have been put over years and years. I mean, these farming chemicals, they're legalized. Then, then every two years they get rid of them because they find out they're unsafe. They're still in our soil. So hemp is the number one crop we could use to pull these pull these out. So, um, from an environmental standpoint, we could save our save our our whole industry that's eventually gonna disappear within the next 20 to 30 years because of global warming, uh, the drought conditions, whatnot. So this is one of the most viable crops to save our farming. But right now, um, our state, we're just, we're just, we're, we're promoting fracking, um, we're, we're black, black oil, we're destroying the earth.
when we could be saving it right here. Um, and then the manufacturing, of course, people are all behind hemp right now. They're all about green industries. Everybody's going to green industries. If you go to the marketplace, you're gonna see everybody wants organic. Everybody wants environmentally friendly. It's a no brainer. It's going everywhere. It's sweeping across our state, it's sweeping across the whole country, the whole world. Um, what kind of priorities do you think the state should take if it were to see an increase in revenue from marijuana? What are some of the things Colorado has put it back into schools and public works? What are some of the things that you can see Nebraska using extra tax money on? Oh, well, first off, we need to help um, the bottom up, the education. Education is uh, really faulty in Nebraska. We, we need to invest in our children. We start invest, investing in their educations. Um, the whole state's gonna go up. Um, we need to invest in infrastructure. We have a lot of infrastructure problems that can be saved. We need to save taxes, um, save money from you know closing down prisons. I'm really big on education though. We need more education. That's what our, we're, our kids are um, begging for a better education. Which state model do you prefer as far as legalization? between Oregon, Washington, and Colorado? Well, I'm a big supporter of the Washington, D.C. legalization. Um, if I was given the opportunity to put a petition out there, I would follow their, their petitioning. Um, this is legalization without taxation where people could go ahead and grow their marijuana in their house and uh, they could go ahead and donate it to each other, um, share it. I, we could do it ourselves. We don't need, I don't need to go to the store to buy. I can just grow it in my own house. So I like Washington, D.C. style. How long do you think it'll be before Nebraska sees full legalization, and what steps do you think will have to be taken to ensure that process? Well, we're, we've been a decriminalized state for since the 78, 1978. We're the fifth or sixth state to decriminalize it. So right now, it's next to legalize, but as far as you say full legalization, maybe 10, 12 years, I mean, minimum, we're gonna have to run a medical bill be passed. Then we're gonna have to add smoking and whatnot to a medical bill. Then we're gonna have to go for a recreational bill. So minimum, probably six years. But total legalization, I think a better chance is since we we're decriminalized already, I think better, better methods to maybe get the medical passed, get the patients their medical, and then maybe go after the fines, maybe uh, take, it off, take it off people's records. Um, like Albuquerque, they went, they had like a $300 fine like we had, but now they're only charging a $25 fine and dumping it out like a parking ticket. I think something like that's more viable here. Um, I don't really think, I think it's gonna be a lot of work. I don't think um, we're quite yet organized to even put a petition of that size out. Um, a recreational petition takes a lot, a lot more um, petition signatures than a, a, like a medical bill or a HEP bill. Um, it'd be a lot easier a bill on top of a bill um, it just doesn't come out of the air. I mean, have you if somebody came with money, if somebody came with a lot of money, though, I mean, if somebody showed up with a million dollars and wanted to put an organization together, they could. They could get on the ballot. Now, do you think that there's been more momentum since our neighboring state of Colorado has legalized? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's momentum across the whole United States. Uh, I mean, it's, it's rolling everywhere. Either we're going to get on it or we're not going to. But, I mean, we're decriminalized already. Um, we're not in bad shape here in Nebraska. I mean, the medicine's available. If you want it, you can find it. Do you feel that this should be a state's issue, or do you think that there, a federal bill of any kind would be necessary? Well, um, I think as far as the states go, I think it should be a state's issue, primarily, um, for them to set up whatever is legal or whatever is not legal in their state. But as far as federal goes, I think the federal needs to get a grip on that it's not a regulated number one drug or whatever. It needs to be put down at the very bottom because it's not a drug. It's a medicine. Drugs, what they sell at Walgreens, 20 people every week in Nebraska die from prescription drugs. Nobody has ever died from smoking marijuana. Marijuana is medicine. It doesn't need to be on the on the one number one drug schedule that's what the that's what the that's what the federal government needs to do they need to figure out their end and uh because telling people lies and and feeding people propaganda pretty much has fed me to the point that i don't even trust the government i don't believe a word they tell me because they've lied and lied and it's obviously it's not a schedule one drug so why don't they just come out with it and tell the truth you know start being real with the people
that's what that's the best thing to do be real with the people maybe people start trusting the government but right now someone like me i was like yeah whatever they tell me it's a lie because look at this schedule one that's just another example i mean there's so many examples out there lies and they just gonna fix it fix it and then let the states decide what they want to do with it just like alcohol while the issue persists we are still a ways off from medical and recreational marijuana use in nebraska people will continue to speak out and get politically active on legalization until it is realized in our state LB 643 is a first step towards medical marijuana, but is limited in scope as it would not apply to certain illnesses such as PTSD and certain types of chronic pain. While the state of Nebraska has issued legal challenges to Colorado's legalization, the people of Nebraska will continue to pay for increased police busts and incarceration of local and out-of-state medicinal and recreational marijuana users and distributors. Colorado is seeing record levels of tax funds from marijuana users being reinvested in education, while in states like Nebraska, taxpayers will continue to spend money on courts and prisons. In western Nebraska, law enforcement agencies are claiming to not have enough funds to stop the flow of illegal products into Nebraska. This is a problem Nebraskans can choose to overcome through medicinal and recreational marijuana legalization. We would like to thank our guests tonight. If you would like more information on LB 643 or more information on the Legalized Marijuana Party of Nebraska, visit our Facebook page, We Omaha News. With We Omaha News, my name is Deshaun Cunningham. Thanks for watching and good night. This has been We Omaha News.